We are celebrating nine years of marriage and we thought that a good way to celebrate was recapping the story of how we first met, how we ended up here, and we thought that it would be a good occasion to tell you guys the story. Yeah, I can't believe it's been over 10 years of a, of a relationship and nine years of marriage. It's kind of unbelievable, actually. <laughs> and we have no babies yet. Yet. The first question I think that is really important to ask is like, where was our frame of mind before we actually met each other? Like, what was going on in your life? What, what was the dating scene like for you? Were you dating? <laughs> I was Were not you looking dating. for love? <laughs> So I moved to the United States in 2014 to be an au pair and it had been five months there and my purpose of going to the, to the United States was learning English. I wanted to be fluent in English, go back to Colombia and write my thesis in English. And during that time, I was not practicing English enough because the baby that I was taking care of, I had to speak Spanish all the time. I would see my bosses often time, but I just didn't want to socialize with them as much, like it's your boss. <laughs> and um, so I didn't have many opportunities to practice English, to learn English. I was going to classes, but the classes were so basic. Like I knew all of this stuff and I was getting frustrated. I didn't know anyone else beside my bosses that spoke English, that were native English speakers. And so I was like, hey, I need to go out there and meet people. Like, but how do I meet people? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to go to the bar by myself and just sit down. I was just not comfortable doing that. And so a lot of my first suggested to get on the dating websites. <laughs> and that, that's what I decided to do. So I joined plentyoffish.com. <laughs> I created a profile and I specifically said that I was looking for friends. So I was not looking to date anyone. I didn't want to fall in love. That was just not in the cards. I was not thinking of finding the guy that I wanted to marry at all. So what were you wanting to do? <laughs> Explicame. Do you say Explicame. Like that? Explica Explicame. So I'm going to recap what Winnie just said. So she basically got on dating websites to find somebody to learn English with instead of actually finding somebody to date and fall in love with, which was completely the opposite of my experience. So I had been on dating apps for like almost two years at this point, And I kind of remember going into 2014. Yes, 10 years ago, going into 2014, saying like, I am... I'm going to keep dating, but I'm, I'm going to be picky about who I choose to spend my time with. Um, so I went on a lot of like single dates, like where I saw the person once and I was like, you know, it takes just one date to find out, hey, do I vibe with this person or not? Um, and I think there's a responsibility on both ends of the male and the female or whatever type of relationship you're in to have um, some sort of a communication and and, and, and like desire between each other and like messaging each other. So it's like, you know, people didn't reach back out to me. I didn't reach back out to them. So we both in a sense ghosted each other and that happened with several, several dates. So I was dating, I was on like five different dating apps and <laughs> plenty of fish was one of them. And I was like, okay. Um, you know, I, I personally at that point in time did want to find somebody to fall in love with, to spend my life with that was an intention at that point in time and i'm thankful that i have found that um but uh you know it wasn't easy and it was just a lot of like you know emotional up and down i do not miss the dating scene i'm sure anybody who's watching this who is in the dating scene does not miss it i i mean doesn't like it either i mean i can't imagine how much more expansive it's become with the different apps and and whatnot but the experience as a male it was like i would message like 20 girls and get one response back and well, it was work it was a job like it's like it was like it was like a it was like a one or two hour task of messaging these people and being very intentional and trying to think of like a message that would like actually get them to like respond and it, it was literally like message 20 people get a, a response back also i don't think i was like dressing the best at that point in time so i wasn't like the most attractive looking person either <laughs> my experience of plenty of fish was completely the opposite to what you're mentioning i joined one weekend and during that weekend i got hundreds of messages of all kinds <laughs> 
like I remember a guy messaged me, hey, do you want a sugar daddy? And at that moment in time, I was like, I have no idea what a sugar daddy, like what is a sugar daddy? He like, <laughs> you're learning English. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to me and I was like, okay, block this person. <laughs> <laughs> and there were just like so many weird messages that I was on it. So but wait a minute, wait a minute. So I messaged you and what did I say that made you go, oh, um, I'm going to interact with this guy. <laughs> so on my profile I had said that I wanted to write a book in the future and that I studied economics. So I think you mentioned something relating to me writing a book and what I wanted to write about. Um, and I think something about economics, but I, I don't remember exactly what you said. But I do remember your pictures. <laughs> and there was one specific picture that was just hilarious to me. And I thought it was so silly. Um, I'll show this picture. <laughs> and, and that just like, imp like it impacted like my memory, right? Like it was in there. What was it about this picture? <laughs> well, it was so silly. <laughs> <laughs> and like all of the other guys were like showing pictures like <laughs> the most also like just them or like group of friends but yours was like so unique <laughs> like you were like oh the spider-man <laughs> i looked like spider-man <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the first thing i thought um that was hilarious yeah do you remember when you messaged me I, I do remember saying something specific about your profile, and it's not a surprise that I would have mentioned something about economics because I was halfway through my master's degree, um, my master's studies at that point in time. Yeah. So of course I'm like, oh, this girl studies economics. Like, yeah, we totally nerd out and talk about heteroscedasticity and <laughs> <laughs> and maybe John, John Menard Keynes or something. I don't know, um, which is true. We ended up talking about those things, but uh, yeah, I think. I just was trying to find genuine messages to send people. I think for me also, what was cool was like seeing that she was Colombian and I actually had played in a band called Intake and we still have music videos and stuff out there. I was, it was like an American Colombian band. So I was playing with like two Colombians in the band. Um, one guy that was a Me Mexican American um, or American Mexican, I should say. Uh, so like it was like a, a kind of Latino American vibe type of band. Uh, and so I had a lot of connections to Colombian people already because when I started playing in a band with this person, Jonathan Camacho, who owns uh, the Greatest Factory in Dallas, uh, along with Chris Chavaria, um, they, which is what they're doing today. Anyways, they they invited me in, and Jonathan into his his family, um, and I got exposed to the Colombian culture in the United States in Dallas, Texas before even ever going to Colombia, finding a Colombian, and eventually marrying a Colombian. So it was just like, there was a lot of things that were familiar, economics, Colombian, um, you want to write your own book, that's a desire of mine too, right? So we might even end up writing a book together. I don't know, we have not done that yet. Um, <laughs> but, we're still young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there were a lot of things that I think were, were just clicking immediately with the, the profile then and there. Yeah, and very quickly you asked for my phone number because you wanted to text directly on the phone number. I do remember that. Um, and get out of the app. So um, that that was good because like you were the only guy and another guy I gave my phone number to mm -hmm. and to text. Um, but something that I think it's really curious is that I, I was on that dating website for one weekend. I thought it was just so overwhelming and it was disgusting, the kind of messages that you get as a girl. I was I just, I, I can't do this. this and I was, on, I was on that website for over a year. <laughs> <laughs> so very, very startling different uh, experiences for men versus women. It was destiny, it was destiny. And this is before Bumble came out. Is that the name of the one? Bumble, where Bumble, like, yeah. like the woman has the message first so because we know that it's a very unequal playing field uh, and the way people approach things and and so like it was before that app was out right revealing our age you know <laughs> <laughs> okay so take me back to our first date what was that like <laughs> well it was pretty quick like i know we we like message on um plenty of fish one weekend and then the next weekend like we already had like a date lineup um, and I was living far away in Allen, Texas. You were in Dallas. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I don't have a GPS. Um, I 
do not know how to get around. So can we meet somewhere close to me, please? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so you uh, mentioned a place, uh, the... The Fillmore Pub in Plano. Which it was super easy to get to. Um, I got there, I was super nervous. Like I did tell one of my friends, like, hey, I'm gonna go on a date. Can you please check on me? I'm gonna be texting you uh, to make sure that, you know, I'm not dead. <laughs> because, well, I, I, the stereotype that you get in Colombia of dating Americans, foreigners, is like, at some point you're gonna end up dead. Like they always kill you. <laughs> and so that was my biggest fear. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, telling my friend, I'm going to like, takes you every like five, ten minutes and I uh, just to tell you that I'm okay and he didn't kidnap me and kill me. <laughs> but um, that didn't happen. <laughs> I didn't take every five, ten minutes. Um, yeah, I remember I parked. I got there pretty early. I parked my car and then I saw you walk across like on the corner of a restaurant. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's so tall. <laughs> that was the first thing that I thought. Uh, and then I was like, oh, he's also really handsome. Like, I love Aww. I love his blonde, and you have long hair at the time. I had longer hair at the time. Yeah, so I was like, ooh, <laughs> he's cute. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing you i was waiting outside the restaurant and i saw you get out of your car in the corner of my eye and i kind of like acted like i didn't see you but i did and I like, I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um and you know we just met each other right there in the the front door and then we went in and it was a simple day yeah we just we sat down at, at a table i ate a salad had a beer you had a beer um you had we a, both ate a salad yeah we both had a salad we had salad and beer on our first date <laughs> <laughs> we sure did and then um then later we went for ice cream but throughout the conversation obviously whitney's english is not as was not as good as it is now no no, uh, no. Not, not even not even not close, even close. <laughs> so like the language was very simple but like we were still, still able to connect on like hey what are you trying to do and that kind of thing and the and the thing that I think, you know, really impressed me about you uh, just on that first date was like how adamant you were about learning English and, you know, just where you were at in life. You were like, hey, look, like I'm doing this thing. I want to learn English to go back to Columbia to do my thesis in English. And that's really why I'm here. And you're, you were re t telling me about these novels and stuff you're reading, stuff I would not read. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm like, that's pretty advanced English uh, that you're really pushing yourself to. So I was very impressed by like your, your willingness to say, I want this and I'm going to do this to get myself there. And that, that has impressed me ever since we've been in a relationship. Oh, <laughs> well, um, what I remember from my first date, it, I mean, it, the English was pretty simple. <laughs> Uh, I do remember explicitly you asking me, is your hair real? <laughs> Did I touch it? <laughs> yes, you said. I can't I touch said, it these days. This is, a, this is an exception for the camera. No. <laughs> and then he, you asked me, can I touch it? I was like, yes. <laughs> that was funny, but um, I, I thought it was, it was just good. Like, what impressed me about you was that you were just very patient with me like and you were like very willing to listening um to what i was saying and ask more questions and mm -hmm. again you were very patient with my english i was trying to like express all of these ideas and all of these things that i wanted to do and i still didn't have the vocabulary or the uh -huh. words and you were still able to like navigate through that and um Get when, answers. When you got what she wanted, she wanted to learn some English and she found a patient person who was going to help her, you know, go through the process of speaking English. I sure did. And I mean, I mean, your eyes. And today, and, like, mm. and today you're still learning English. Of course. And hoy yo estoy estudiando español y yo aprendo cosas todo el tiempo y yo dice cosas incorrecto todo el tiempo también. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have to say, I thought you were never going to text me after that. Like, I thought it was just like, okay. And I didn't like feel from you that you wanted to see me again, that you wanted to um, continue to hang out. 
uh, it's the word <laughs> that I yeah. would use. Like, because when you dropped me off at, me, at my car after um, ice cream, you were like, okay, bye. And I was like, okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> you were so casual. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that, that was fun, but I guess I'm never going to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think my strategy of dating at that time was to find somebody who, and it's easier for me to think about this now, you know, 10 years later, to know where my mindset was with a more mature mindset today, right? Is because I can articulate this a lot better is that I really wanted somebody who was interested in me as a person. And I think generally, generally, people who want long-term relationships that are lasting want that so it was like I didn't know how to really navigate that except for to be my casual authentic real self and not try to like get romantic or kiss right away yeah. like it was like hey do you do you like me for me because if you like me for me then things are going to probably work out right mm -hmm. and so like I, I didn't have the way of like articulating it that directly back then as I do now but I, I think back on that moment, that's why I would often like most of my dates were like that, where I would just like I'm, I, I wouldn't give any indication that I wanted to see them again, mm -hmm. because what was important to me as well as a male. Right. I know that in in most cultures across the world, you know, the man's supposed to take the initiative, but it, it happens the opposite way, too, in which the woman needs also express interest inside in, in the man. Everybody wants to be desired. Everybody wants to be wanted. And if you don't show that you want that other person, you're never going to get, you're never going to receive that same intent and level of love. Um, and so I think for me, it was important to always leave space after a first date to see if the interest was still there like a week later. So it was important for me to, because, and I'm like, oh, this person doesn't want to text or in, in, interact with me and just simple text messaging a week later. But it, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't text you cause yeah. I was like, I guess he doesn't have any interest, but you did text me the following Wednesday. Cause our, our date was on a Sunday. And you texted me on Wednesday, and I was like, "Oh, what yeah. a surprise!" It, like I always wanted, I always kept like a day or two or three in between because I didn't want to show too much immediate interest, right? Like that, I was too clingy at that point in time. Um, but I also wanted to create enough space to allow that, that doubt to be in there, because like, I mean, think about it. Like I'm like, I want to be able to text you a week later, and you're still wanting to like see me. And so like I would, I did text other girls, and they just ghosted me, right? equally the same way it goes to them so it was just kind of um you know you know a thing where you, it, it's it's a fine line and i think the attraction needs to still be there a week in a month from the time of first meeting in 10 years in 10 years <laughs> it needs to still be there but you texted me on wednesday and you said hey you want to go to the Rosebera museum this next weekend and I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And we do have a picture of our second date um, because not only that, we went to the Ross Perot Museum and then when he was like, hey, I'm going to go to the Reunion Tower in Dallas, Texas. Before right? you recap the entire second date, I think that was like the best date ever. Like, the, and I feel like that was like a definition of what our relationship would be for the rest of the years because we did so much on that date. We did. <laughs> we met at like... Did we eat? No, we met right after lunch, probably like one or two in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Went to the Ross, uh, Ross Pro Museum in Dallas for like maybe hour and a half. We watched a movie and then we did the entire museum. We walked around and I was like, hey, Jenny, I have an opera meeting at the Reunion Tower. Do you want to come with me? Yeah. Um, and you went out there with me. You made all the au pairs. <laughs> yeah, I met a bunch of au pairs. We took a picture with some of the au pairs. Um, and then, and and that's the picture that we have at the reunion tower. And then because I was like reading a lot at the time and I wanted to learn English, you told me about this place called um, Half, Price, Half Price Books. Family. Yes, and you made it sound so awesome. Yeah, I was like, awesome yes, place. please take me. <laughs> it's a huge, huge bookstore in Dallas and sell used books. And you took me there. We spent what, like two hours in that place? Yeah. Just and then browsing we around. And then we went and had dinner. And then 
one of my friends was like, hey, I want to go meet a friend. Do you guys want to come for dinner? <laughs> and we're like, yes, let's go for dinner. Um, and it was just like a good balance of like fun, but like intellectual stuff and being spontaneous. Um, and I, I think that was like a really good day. Mm -hmm. Like that was the day that I was like, oh my gosh, I really like this. Yeah, this it, boy. at first, at first, the first day it was like, you know, like, hey, I really like this person. And then the interaction with other people and doing things was just like more fluid. And it felt it super just, natural. Yeah, yeah, it felt natural and it felt, it felt nice. It felt, it, it felt like I wasn't trying to be a different person or anything like that. And like, we really wanted to be around each other. Plus like you inviting me to something immediately after, you know, just scheduling like, you know, a two or three hour date was like a huge indication to me like, oh, this person wants to be around me. They want me to join them in their their life they want me to be a part of their life and that to me was like very very important so if you're trying to fall in love out there yeah, <laughs> uh you know like i think it's really important to like include the other person in whatever you're doing even if it's something that's like you know hey i gotta go get groceries you want to come with me go get some groceries at the grocery store i mean we went to half price books like yeah. which yeah. is just such a nerdy place and yeah we didn't books. even buy anything. We didn't buy buy books. We looked at books. We looked at books. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. It's like, yeah, oh, do I want to buy this right now? I'm like, I already got a stack of books at home. <laughs> so did you fall in love with me for the green card? <laughs> no. <laughs> Although sometimes we, well, we used to tell that story to people in bars when we like used to go out and party and people would ask like, hey, how did you guys meet? And then we would just say stupid stories like, yeah. Like Johnny ordered me on like male bride whatever website. Yeah, a bride order site. <laughs> <laughs> or like we would tell them, oh yeah, like um, Johnny got like goats and cows from my parents because he like married me or, or just like stupid stuff and um, people would be like shocked. Yeah. <laughs> we would always correct the story, but we like at first it was always like a silly. Yeah. Silly story. A silly, a silly joke. <laughs> no, I did not marry you for the green card. Here's a, here's my next question. What what qualities about me in the summer of 2024? Because we met in May 2024. I mean 20 sorry 2014. In 2014, <laughs> the summer of 2014. 2014. <laughs> 2014. 2014. <laughs> what what made you fall in love with me? Um, well. You were very determined and you were very disciplined with your, because you were doing uh, grad school for economics. So you were like very, like, I gotta finish, you know, my classes and blah, blah, blah. Also, you were a teacher um, at the time and like I saw you uh, planning because it was like before summer, mm -hmm. before you ended the school year, like I saw you like planning or you were always saying like, hey, I have to plan for the week. Mm -hmm. um, do lesson planning um, and I just saw you how determined you were with your work and also with your studies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also how fun you were like <laughs> it was easier in the summertime when I didn't have any work to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah you you were a lot of fun and you wanted to do active things which was important mm -hmm. for me too like um, and constantly do new things she was another important aspect for me to like going, uh, no, I don't know, trying new restaurants, just mm -hmm. doing new things. Um, that and obviously how handsome you were. <laughs> I was happy. I was happy with the caramel skin. So. <laughs> and I mean, overall, how patient you were. You were just so patient with me, um, especially at the time that I was learning English. And I didn't have the skills that I have today to communicate, um, yet you were still, you know, very patient. Like there would be things that I would just not understand at all. Mm -hmm. And you would be like, hey, is this, 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 this. Yeah. <laughs> and your ability to like explain things, that was um, very attractive. Being a trained teacher. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how you work with your friends too, because um, you know, I've never been like that close to my friends. I am close to my family, mm -hmm. uh, which 
I think is why I have never been able to like open space for my friends. But you were really close to your friends. Like your friends were like your family. Um, and that was something that I really admire about you. Um, because these were like friendships that were like 10, 15 year old friendships that people you knew like since you were like very young. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you still had those connections and I, I was like whoa that that's that's really awesome yeah. yeah interesting I have not thought about these things for a long time uh, <laughs> so it's appropriate timing since it's like our ninth year anniversary <laughs> oh man same question my direction now uh, yeah like what uh, what made you fall in love with me so I already alluded to this prior but like Whitney was starting to want to wanting to include me in like other activities so she was asking me to go places and you know usually in the dating scene it's like the man is taking the initiative or whatever um, and so I liked that I was being asked to go with her to do things and I thought that was super awesome um, and it was quick like I felt like it within like a month and a half I felt like I really loved this person and I didn't want to said that to me yeah, that but it was that I, quick. I didn't want to say it that quick but it was just like I think I really like I just want to be around her and so like like fast forward from May to July it was like at, by July we were like planning almost every single weekend to hang out with each other yeah. if we were available depending on what was going on um and you know I I really enjoyed how determined you were right and I think now reflecting back on it it's like something a quality that we both have that is easier to see now um like kind of in hindsight and with a more mature mind but like I think we both possess the quality of like valuing our personal growth and because we value our own personal growth um and we make that like a priority in our, our individual lives um, that was like a huge attraction to us. I, I saw that you learning English and you wanting to go after your own education and I basically got in the way of that um, was something that I, 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 I loved. And I was like, she's determined. If you also were very fun to hang out with, um, you know, you weren't trying to like change me or like you weren't trying to be superficial. And um, I liked how like direct you were, uh, you know, so like everything and those are still qualities that you possess today. Um, so, you know, 10, 10 plus years down the road of our relationship. And I mean, it, it, things moved so fast by like August when he was like, hey, would you be interested in going to Columbia with me <laughs> and for Christmas time? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, let's do it. And so we went to Columbia in 2014. And that was my first time going to Columbia. And I literally went with no expectations. I said, you'll be fed and you'll have a bed. And that's all I was told. And I took my whole two week vacation and did not ask where we would be, what it would be like. And <laughs> that was one of the most interesting trips of my entire life. Um, because I just, you know, instantly within three hours of landing in Bogota, I met like 60 to 70 family members and had a novena. <laughs> and then we took a family trip driving from Bogota to Santa Marta. So I already I saw half the country like, you know, it, it very immediately. Um, and I things just kind of built up so quickly within that year and it continued into 2015. And then by 2015, you know, I proposed. Uh, Wait, our relationship was put to the test, though. I think you forget this. <laughs> yeah. What part was put to the test? <laughs> well, because it was so quickly like I, I, I kind of knew very quickly too but at the beginning of July 2014 I had an issue with my bosses her au pair boss yeah with my au pair boss which being an au pair you live with them yeah you live um, with the parents of the child you're taking yeah. care of it's like living with your boss <laughs> yes and so I had an issue with them and we ended their relationship like I was not going to work with them anymore and I had to find another family in able to be able to in order to be able to stay in the United States um, and in that process like I did everything to be able to stay in Dallas Texas close to you because I didn't want to go to another state uh, and potentially just break the relationship because I don't think either one of us wanted to do long distance and um, in that process I found a family with four kids <laughs> she went from one to four kids so I went from one 24 month old baby so like a two-year-old that was like amazing 
to four kids that were eight, six, and twins of three. And it was a chaotic household. It was just insane, but I was like, I'm gonna do everything that I can to be able to be close to Johnny. Like, I don't, I don't wanna lose Johnny. And I did admire that. <laughs> I'm very thankful you're here today. It was insane. It was, it was probably some of the hardest months of my life living in that house and taking care of the kids. Um, also, some of the most rewarding, like those kids, taught me English. <laughs> yeah, those poor kids. <laughs> yes, those, those poor You'd kids. You'd say things wrong and they would correct you. Yeah, they have no shame. Like, they are like, what the f are you saying with you? Obviously not like that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have that vocabulary yes, yet. Yes. <laughs> and they would correct me like, it's not like that, it's like this. I was, okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about all that. Like, I met the first family and I went into their house and it was a clean, very clean tidy house like everything was organized and just perfect which is what i was used to in colombia yeah. yeah. and then you had to stay about two or three weeks at this other family's house where you were trying to get reassigned yeah. so you were kind of like homeless but living at this other other house <laughs> i met them too and they they were a little bit more normal you know like she was the coordinator of my yeah. program yeah but their family dynamic was a little bit more normal i would say and then you went to this house which actually reminded me i met them too right i actually met three families <laughs> before you <laughs> met my real family <laughs> before i met your real family <laughs> all within 2014 um yeah it was kind of insane it's so like i had to like you know I, it, be impressive to all these people like i don't try to impress people like i just don't like you either accept me or you don't like see you, that was another you thing. have the option hit the like button or hit the unlike button i just don't care um, <laughs> that's another thing that i loved about you you didn't care about what others thought about you yeah. and now we're showing the whole world that <laughs> we don't give up okay this video is probably dang long super long so if you want more love story stuff like this i need you to comment below ask your questions i even asked chat gpt what are some good couple questions to ask but at this point in time i should just put that on a separate video you let me know if i should make that video and we can go through all those different questions um or pile in the comments you know and let us know what you think uh this experience that we have had in being an international couple has really been part of the inspiration as to why we are traveling across the world, why I am learning a second language to actually call Spanish my second language. Somebody call, said the other day, I'm here, we're here in Mexico right now, they said that my Spanish was fluid and I laughed because <laughs> I was like, Dio no estoy fluida. <laughs> es porque yo puedo uh, comunicar uh, a veces apropiada y tu piensas que yo estoy fluida, pero, pero no, no, pero yo entiendo, mejor. yo entiendo metir de estas hablando, mitad, la mitad, 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 sí, 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 anyways, yeah, we met on preniofish.com, I didn't think it was going to be love, but it was love, you want to love, and you got it, <laughs> you got to give love to get love, <laughs> <laughs>